This video is the second part in a series, and I highly recommend to watch the first part as I go in depth about many things there that I will also bring up here. And if you do happen to find this video enjoyable, then you know what to do, this isn't your first YouTube video. If it is, then I apologize because now we will continue the journey of Jonathan Joestar. We previously talked about the fight at the Joestar Manor, which ended in a stalemate, but left Jonathan severely injured. It is when he's recovering from his injuries where he reunites with his one true love, Erina Pendleton. Keep in mind that Jonathan still doesn't know that Dio is still alive. So for him, the place where he grew up in, the Joestar Manor, along with all of his remaining family members, of course including his adopted brother Dio, all perished when the manor burned down. Jonathan really has nothing left. Which is why this moment is even more important, as Erina and Jonathan reuniting gives Jonathan hope for the future, which we're going to discuss later, as Jonathan's hope for Erina is the driving factor behind his final actions. And even though Speedwagon totally steals this hospital scene, Jonathan's journey for judgment can finally begin with the introduction of an Italian sandwich enthusiast. Jonathan Joestar. Very quickly after Jonathan's recovery, he meets William Sapelli, a ripple master of Italian descent. He takes a sort of mentor role for Jonathan as they embark on a journey to seek judgement towards the Stone Mask and Dio. As a master of the Ripple, Sapelli is confident and brave, notably thinking that one's courage is proportional to the hardship that one faces. And as such, Sapelli teaches Jonathan something more important to win over Dio than the Ripple. He teaches him bravery and how to stand up to evil even when you might be terrified. Alright, look, of all the bullshit I said, this one is the most important, since Jonathan actually utilizes Sapelli's teachings a little later in the part when they face off against Dio and two of the most fierce knights throughout history, Bruford and Tarkis. These two knights might have been brought back to life by Dio, however, as seen when Jonathan fights against Bruford, the pure human soul still exists inside of them, and in this fight, Jonathan has conflicting feelings with how he should act, as he hated killing a man that had so much honor. He had to kill Bruford to save him, but this action affected Jonathan since, quote, even punished with hatred, he had such pride, such a disciplined heart. It's the stone mask that turned it into madness that I must hate, end quote. This encounter with Bruford solidified Jonathan's goals of destroying the stone mask and stopping his brother D Do. once and for all. <coughs> Later on, Jonathan's nobility is shown off in the fight with Arcus, as this is also the moment when Jonathan's strength is enhanced, as when Sapelli dies and Jonathan is the only man left to fight for the good of humanity, Sapelli's Hamon is transferred to Jonathan. And you know, Speedwagon doesn't count as a man fighting for the good of humanity, since he's just a glorified cheerleader. Come on, we all know it. Anyways, Jonathan's strong justice and judgement of Tarkus proves the sheer power of good, honourful and righteous actions, which plays a huge part in the final showdown with Dio. After seeing death and despair fill his regular life in order to protect those that he loves, Jonathan, with the help of Sapelli's mentor and his two stunts, has to stand up against his brother Dio as their final showdown can finally begin. Dio, you think I'm the villain? Go fuck yourself! One thing is evident right away, Dio and just evil in general is far more powerful in numbers as Dio manipulates others to fight for him. As it stands, the bad and evil in this world is simply more powerful than the good. And as Jonathan is one of the few good, honorable, righteous men left, his character culminates in this single fight. Everything that he has learned, his strong determination, justice, bravery, love, and hate right here. Like, right here, he's a symbol of everything just, and Jonathan's dignity and honor is the only thing powerful enough to stop Dio. However, Jonathan wasn't ready for this fight. He couldn't have been, 
but mirroring the very first fight when Jonathan won against Dio, his determination and willpower when his honour and loved ones are on the line unlocks a hidden power inside of Jonathan. I personally believe that this is the true strength of honour and nobility, giving Jonathan the strength that he needs to win. And as I said during the Tarkus fight, the power of good and righteous actions prevail. And even with the hardships like the death of Jonathan's loved ones, the good, honourful way of life always wins in the end. Dio has only respected one man prior to meeting Pucci, and it was Jonathan. This spirit of pride that Jonathan shows is the only thing strong enough to rival the great Dio, and as such, Dio recognises the power hidden inside Jonathan. As even with all the years of torture that he put Jonathan through, he rose up, never admitting defeat. And as Jonathan finishes Dio off with the sword left to him by the proud knight Bruford, one final tear runs down Jonathan's face as his once former brother is finally defeated. Dio. And this long, bizarre journey can finally conclude. Or does it? Jonathan achieves the symbol of justice after Dio's defeat, but as we all know, his journey does not have a happy ending, since whilst travelling on a ship towards America on his honeymoon with Eruna, Dio returns to end their happily ever after story. Jonathan, being the purest form of good in the world, sacrifices himself for Eruna and ends Dio's reign once and for all. Jonathan coming to terms with his own mortality is the opposite of what Dio does, as he previously rejected his mortality to ascend and become something that he thinks is greater. The contrast of Dio and Jonathan is as great and strong as usual. Jonathan's last wish is for Eruna to be happy, and as previously established, his hope for Eruna's future also plays a big part in Jonathan's actions. And as Jonathan's life fades away, he says to Dio, quote, I can feel a bizarre friendship between us, and now our fates are intertwined. They will disappear together as this ship explodes. End quote. Jonathan dies, grasping his brother, only wishing for Eruna's happiness shows the character growth that has happened to Jonathan during the events of Phantom Blood, and as one of the final lines in Phantom Blood is, quote, Jonathan Joestar's life vanquished into oblivion. His history was lost to the shadows, known to no one. The public will never hear the story of the proud life that he lived, but his descendants will hear of it. End quote. Jonathan's fate had no other ending. However, his spirit and symbol of justice never truly dies since all the other Jojos following him have the same symbol of justice only in their respective parts. Every following Jojo has the same fighting spirit in their blood. Joseph uses it in a different way when he fights against Asterix Strippers. Jotaro uses it in a similar way to Jonathan when he fights against Dio and finally kills him, you know, for real this time. And you can see it take a physical form in the concept of stunts. The fighting spirit introduced in Phantom Blood is what eventually Araki is going to develop into stance. The fighting spirit is so important that he develops stance from it. Like, it's in every part of Jojo, except, you know, people don't notice that there's stance in part 1 and 2 just because it takes a different form. They even transcend the parallel universes since, you know, part 7 and 8 also has the same fighting spirit, and why the fuck am I still talking about this? Jonathan's journey throughout Phantom Blood is something that I never really hear people talk about. People either say that he's good or that he's boring, and never explain why either one is true. So I made this series just to research Jonathan and learn more about the history behind Araki making part 1, and just part 1 in general, since when it comes to Jojo parts, it's the one that's often overlooked. And I can confidently say that Phantom Blood and Jonathan is really good. But of course, I wouldn't compare them to the later parts, since you know, Jojo is one of the few shows that gets better after every part. And as Araki evolved his writing style and developed into new interesting ideas, that's when Jojo really shines. But nothing like the part 7 or 8, none of that could be possible without this part, without Jonathan Joestar. If you have followed me throughout this journey, then I hope Jonathan's courage and spirit has inspired you, just the same as it inspired me to make this video. And maybe when you see that person say that Jonathan Joestar is actually a bad character, redirect them to this video and I will tell their smug ass that they are simply wrong. With his courage and spirit, Jonathan sets a legacy as the very first Jojo of the series. And as someone who never really liked Jonathan that much, I can now truly see why he was perfect in his respected part and that his way of life is one to be replicated. 
However, his honorful and righteous way of life does not continue without the Jojos, and instead fades out along with the character of Jonathan Joestar.